Well, folks, yeah, well, the announcement will happen today. We've got a big announcement from the Prime Minister and the, the uh, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Grant Robinson. Is he the Deputy Prime Minister? Anyway, they uh, both yes, got is. on the podium today. He is. Thanks, Vaughan. Yep. And we got Vaughan here. The good news is there's some good news there for small business, and there's some um, hope that we're going to get some more help to get us through this. There's also some oh, big begrudging news. 90% of the population in a DHB environment, like in Auckland, there's three DHBs. If you get 90% fully vaccinated, then you can move on to the traffic light system. And what does that mean? That means businesses can open, but only in accordance with the traffic light system, which has three different grades to it. Vaughan, what did you think overall in the package? Yeah, well, look, hey, I, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's got a tick. Uh, so so let's, that's better than a cross. We've sat on our seats since Monday when we told this announcement, we were told this would be announced today. In between time, daily cases have cracked 100, and we've been warned that they'll go to uh, closer to 200. So, so, you know, Delta's here to stay. Um, so, okay, before we start, there's one thing I'll also say, man, am I sick of um, the word modeling? We're not toys, we're not a hobby, we're real humans. So I wish they'd just drop that. Uh, secondly, the traffic light system, there's a saying, and that is, if you can't explain something clearly, you obviously do not understand it. And I think the traffic light system is a good example of that. It, it, it looks and smells to me for all intent like a prototype that's been launched too early. So go back to the drawing board, get it right, bring it back out when you're ready, and it's easy to understand. Right now, people look at each other and go, what did he or she say there? Uh, so that's that. Okay. Uh, well, so again, let, me, let me just add a bit in there. What I noticed from the Prime Minister, she didn't go into details about the, uh, the traffic light system, although you've told me you've done the thorough research that is actually mm -hmm. online. But what mm -hmm. I found is it's, it's kind of a patronising manner. And she's going, well, I don't want to confuse the poor people out there, so I'm not going to give them too much detail today, and they can look it up for themselves. Well, Prime Minister, there's a, there's a position available in the Wiggles right now, and we really would think that they, you could qualify for that. But look, they're getting past that. We're very happy to see some benefits in there. So Vaughan, what else was there yeah. that we could be happy about? Yeah. yeah, and just to close off on the traffic light system, in terms of a stop, go, pause, wait, or whatever, you know, we're really talking about districts. If they're tying the target, the 90% target to DHBs, um, then you're talking about districts, but I suppose the only lights that are used to explain districts are red light districts, and you don't want that there with vaccination, do you? So <laughs> you kind of have to. So I, I suppose they chose the lesser of two evils. Okay, first of all, oh, well, let me just add one more point. One of the things they said once, once we get beyond the 90%, the threshold, we go into the traffic light system. But what that will mean is the use of the passports. Now, she used that word passports. So, what Matt mm. probably says to me, if you're not vaccinated, you don't join the community, you're not allowed into yeah. all sorts of premises and businesses. But um, that'll be the detail in the traffic light system. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Max, and rightfully so. A, a uh, vaccination certificate will, will, you know, uh, provide freedom to the to the double vaccinated, double vaxxed. Uh, look, the full vax rate, ninety percent. That's the target. We all understand ninety percent. So good news, we've got that. We'll be reviewed on November twenty nine. Auckland, if we hit 90% before November 29, we're going to be let out of prison. So fantastic. That's good news. So the roadmap actually now has a clear marker point on it. Well done. Because the roadmap we got two weeks ago kind of was a bit empty, a bit vague and innocuous. Look, I'll no just put my little bit in there if you don't mind, Vaughan. Yeah, I like the fact that there is a, a finally, we got a plan. We know what the, what the milestone is that we got to get to. I would have still prefer a date because I think it's going to be very difficult to get this last small proportion, like in Auckland, 16,000 people. On Saturday, Super Saturday, there wouldn't be a person in New Zealand who hasn't had a chance to get vaxxed. And look, if they're yeah. saying no now, what's going to change their mind now that we're actually oh. easing up on the demands? Yeah, but, but it's good that uh, the vax rate is the measurement and we're not at the mercy of daily cases or anything like that. We've actually chosen something, put it on the roadmap, and I think to put the 29 November, the date, into context, as of last night, we were 66.2% double vaxxed in New Zealand. We're rising at a rate of just under 1% a day. So November 29 is actually realistic. Uh, so, so I know it's still too long for a lot of businesses to wait, but the reality is it's a, it, they've taken a position. You know, they've, they've given us a target and a goal. So that, you know, is that. What, what, I, what, I, okay. what I picked from the 29th Vaughan was that they're going to review yeah. what their decision was today. So it's to hold us on the edge of our seats again to the 29th. And again, it's to get their, our, our eyes on the TV in front of them again so we can hear them. Because yeah. today yeah, I yeah, measured no, it, no. there was a, yeah. a four and a half minute of build up and how wonderful we've done as a, as a government to really lead us through this terrible time. 
And um, I yeah, just Max, I, yeah, I, I agree. I agree that we could have our hearts broken on November 29. But my feeling as well, December one is 48 hours later, and it'll be something like midnight X December, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, retailers that rely on uh, the Christmas roll and those, you know, it's like we're giving something to the business community. I can kind of see what some of the logic is of hopefully having good news on November 29. So let's remain uh, relentless optimists. And November 29 is when um, we get our detention bracelets taken off our ankles and we're allowed out of house arrest. And oh, let's hope, Vaughan. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm always optimistic, but um, i, I yeah. got to say, it's, uh, it just seems to be dragging right. on this, this 10 yeah. weeks of lockdown. Time will tell. We're a month away, five weeks away from that. Okay, additional to that, there's two other things in here that are significant. Number one, uh, or sorry, say the second thing, two other things, is the uh, mental health support package that has been set up. I'll, I'll let you talk about that because you're very close to some disasters in that area. So fantastic. The government's actually done something in that area to, to support small businesses. And the other one is business resurgence being uh, doubled to $43,000, paid fortnightly instead of three weekly. That is great news as well. Yep. So those are two wins and improvements. Uh, let's yeah, let's how just you get into those two details. Um, mental health, $10 million. That $10 million will be then parted, imparted onto, wait for it, um, EMA and um, or Business New Zealand and uh, um, Michael Barnett will, will distribute the money as they think fit. And look, I know that concerns you, Vaughan, and it does me. But um, I would say that, you know, hopefully they'll find other people to distribute the money properly because I don't believe they see what I see. Do you know, only this week, Vaughan, I got a call from a man who's on the verge of breaking. He said, I can hardly face my children. I'm really broken. I've let them down. I've failed them. My business is broke. I, can't, I have to go to Wins now to feed them. And I'm absolutely broken, man. And um, I don't know what to do, Max. All I want to do is just get away and actually go for a drive. Um, and yep. just just yep. to give the family a rest from me and give them from me because I am depressed. That poor yeah, man hey, Max, needs Max, mental health. Yeah, yeah, Max, you've let the genie out of the bottle as far as I'm concerned in terms of referring to uh, the effectiveness of EMA, Business New Zealand, uh, Business Chambers, uh, rolling out a small business program. Uh, look, quite frankly, everybody who's really in the small business community knows that the small business database within those organizations is absolutely tiny. Uh, and so I don't know how they think they're going to get to the coalface. Whilst uh, they command a position of respect as spokespeople for the business community, every time someone who is at the coalface of the small business community that hears uh, uh, small business words come out of those advocacy organizations, roll their eyes and go, well, who the heck are they speaking to out here? Because small business today, I can tell you, 99% of all new small businesses do not sign up to the Chambers or the EMA or Business New Zealand. They don't sign up to anything. They want everything for free. So world's changed. And, and you know, I thought about it, Max. It's like going back to the 1970s. I remember when my dad was the president of the local Lions Club. That's the era of the EMA, um, the Chambers, and uh, business, well, not so much Business New Zealand because they evolved out of, out of that. But uh, Rotary Clubs, you know, that, that's when you actually dressed up and went along these things and rubbed shoulders. The digital transformation which those organizations haven't really digitally transformed has left them behind now that's this is not like actually a knock it's just saying hey don't use um a hammer to change a light bulb it's the wrong tool for the and job i can give you personal experience on that i worked for ema which is business new zealand for 11 years i worked at the ground floor where i dealt with disputes arguments strikes lockouts all those hard things and that's where i always in that 11 years, not once was I asked my opinion. Not once was I asked what the people are asking. And the leaders who were then talking to government every day, and which I assume is happening now, don't really know what's happening on the ground floor. They don't even ask their people. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, in terms of a hand on, hands on advisor, myself and probably five or six others here in Auckland, I don't know of any that work with more small businesses. And I can tell you that none of them. Our members, none of them. Okay. So let's so, move on. We, the resurgent payment, I'm just going to say that that's been, it's been doubled and that's fantastic news. And it'll be paid fortnightly, not uh, not not uh, monthly, I think it is now, but fortnightly and double the amount. So I believe that was $800 per week uh, extra for um, small yeah, business. Yeah. And also, yeah. I think uh, the numbers for if you've got an FTE, let me just get the numbers right here. So if you've got an FTE of one of them, it's $800, 800. extra per yeah, week yeah. and that's paid yeah. fortnightly guys and that's massive massive dollars fantastic, extra that'll be in your fantastic. pocket yeah look 
full credit to the government for really looking at that because that's targeting the business, not the employee. That's actually the overall business, even though there's an FTE support in there. Uh, so, so fantastic. That that um, is a real standout. And look, you know, on this note, this is we're talking about the government in the session, but the reality is, is that. Um, uh, it was tactical and it's typical in politics that the opposition released their economic uh, recovery plan uh, the day before uh, this announcement. And you can absolutely see that some of the initiatives the government has used are the identical initiatives that are sitting over. So clearly, the advocates that work with the government are the same advocates that are working with the opposition, running with the hares and hunting with the hounds, uh, working on the basis, well, if they can't get it over the line, they will. I actually think some of the things that are in the national economic plan will end up being used by the government. Uh, but wait, there's more. The government have got more to offer. So what they've offered also is, and small business people, you want to take hold of this, that's to go out and get advice, professional advice. And if you want to go and talk to an accountant or a, a, a lawyer, particularly now if you're actually at the point of break um, and you can't afford it, you've probably got no cash at all, you don't think you can afford it, then you better go and get assistance for that. Now, wait for it up to $3,000 you can get for just advice alone. And then the next thing is, if you're going to implement any actions that the, the professional may see, say, for example, I put a website up or something like that, there's another $4,000 that you can claim. So guys, I would certainly recommend you out there, if you've got a small business now, to lean on that, grab what you can, and uh, take full use of it, because professional help is exactly what you need right now in these unusual circumstances. Yeah, brilliant, Max. And so, you know, I think in just terms of a quick wrap up there, uh, great, great news that there's actually uh, a definitive guideline that's been given. We know where we stand. So, you know, let's knock this out of the ballpark. Um, I think the thing that probably we could have given more focus to, but it's a whole other session, talking about Auckland specifically, because what we've talked about is a national uh, yep. situation uh, nationwide. All right, now Vaughan's done this to death, but when you guys are going out there, when you've got to get professional help and assistance, be careful of those charlatans who are out there looking to make a buck out of this. So, um, and Vaughan, it's in your sector. There's 120 million being given to Mari just to get them vaccinated. I would say out of that will be some opportunists who will go in. The, I'm an expert on this field. Hey, you guys, just give me a quick 5 million now and I'll go out and uh, I'll get I'll get a few people vaccinated. Well, I'd just be cautious, yeah. I think. And then... Uh, uh, yeah. Mental health is another I, area where charlatans step into it and other particular areas as well, and also professionals. But what I'd suggest you do is ask them, what experience have you got? What qualifications have you got? Can you send me two or three of your references so I can ring them and have a talk to them to ask about your performance? Yeah, yeah. Max, you know, you mentioned about the support there for Māori. And um, as you know, that's the sector that I work in. But let's talk about this in general. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, use Māori them as an example. I consult HTK Group and I only consult with HTK Group to the Māori sector is because it's Māori owned, 100%, Māori advisors, 100%. We work with Māori small businesses, 100%. Therefore, we're an expert in our field. Taking that wider across advisory, and actually I'll just finish off with Māori, you know, there are a lot of advisors out there that are businesses that just happen to have Māori names. They just, you know, it's window dressing. Go over to advisory. There are people that have jumped in there because they're tapping uh, into public funding because clearly they wouldn't cut the mustard in private sector. And so, so this is the thing, as you said, Max, background check, Google the shit out of them, talk to peers, ask to speak to businesses that they've actually consulted with, use that. that that's where you smell the sweat. So, so good call, Max. Yep. And so look, there's some good news just to go through it very quickly. Resurgent payment doubled. You're going to get some assistance for professional help. And uh, there's quite good money there, $3,000 and $4,000. So I would say use it. And uh, there's nothing in terms of wage so support, but the mental health, there's some money there for you as well. And I'd strongly urge you to use that. If you're feeling a bit depressed and need some help, look, borrow, get, grab the, the government's offer and go and get yourself some help. Look, Vaughan, thanks very much. And I'm going to try and sign off without you getting a final word. I will let you have that. It's my honour to let you have the final word. <laughs> Bugger.